All right, reporting live from jandequipment.com. Today we're gonna to show you how to properly prime and clean your soft wash system. Um, so first I'm gonna show you how to prime, and the next step I'm gonna show you how to clean, and then I'll explain why it's so important uh, during each step. So the first thing we're gonna do is prime the system. This is something you're gonna do either the very first time you purchase it, uh, maybe the beginning of every day, possibly even the beginning of every week. What we're really trying to do right now is we're trying to get all the air out of the system and replace it with our material, um, whether it's SH or an SH mix or whatever surfactants you have. Uh, regardless of the material, uh, this process is really gonna be the same. So right now you gotta imagine this system is full of air. Um, all my line is full of air. My suction side is full of air. I have nothing but air in the system. So the first thing I wanna do is get this air out and replace it with the fluid. So here's what we're gonna do. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn on my pump for about five seconds before I drop my suction end into the fluid. The reason I'm doing that is that sometimes air bubbles can get trapped here in the diaphragm pump and I want to create a little bit of, let's say, uh, air flow or velocity of air coming through the unit so that it collects that air with it and pushes it out while it's displacing the fluid. And that's the reason why we're gonna turn it on first out with the suction end outside of our fluid. So now it's running. I'm gonna let it run for about five seconds. Um, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and lower this down in. And so now I have fluid coming into my system and slowly replacing the air in my system. If you look really closely, it might be hard to see in the video. You can still definitely see that I have air bubbles in there. You can see that, you see those air bubbles. And you know, this is exactly what we're trying to get out. And you know, people are like, well, why is it not flowing? Well, the reason is we actually have to come back to our gun and without a tip in a gun, I'm actually gonna start cycling out some of this air. So you're gonna actually hear the air escape now. Not sure if you caught that in the video, but I just heard like a hiss of air escaping. And I'm gonna do a cycle of 10 seconds on my trigger, 10 seconds off my trigger. And I'm just allowing my pump to continue to run while I'm doing this cycle and um, just let more air out. Every time I pull the trigger and I'm hearing that hiss, that's letting me know that more air is exiting my system and it's being displaced by more of my material, which is what I'm attempting to accomplish. Here we go again, releasing more air. Ooh, we're getting close to liquid. Boom, so now I got my liquid. Uh, my pump has not stopped running at all since I started this process so far. Uh, now that I'm getting liquid flow, I'm honestly almost done. I've released a trigger and my pump stopped. That's the right thing. But there's probably still a little bit of air in there and it's hard to notice without your tip in. So at this point now, I'm actually gonna put in my tip. Um, whether it's your straight shooter or fan tip, it shouldn't make a difference. What I'm gonna check for now, what I'm going to do now, is I wanna listen for any crackling or popping sounds because that sound is the last bit of air bubbles escaping the system. And I wanna get all of that out of the system before I'm ready to work. At this point, I'm technically drawing my material through the tank and I'm getting material at the ends of the gun. You could technically shoot this back into your material tank to not waste any material. And that's kind of loud, so I'm just gonna shoot it to the side in this example because we're trying to listen for this, hick this, this hissing sound or a cracking sound. I'm hearing a few here or there probably very hard to pick up on the camera. I'm gonna go ahead and do another 10 second cycle here. And I'm listening for popping or crackling sounds. The popping or crackling sounds is air exiting the system. I wanna get it all out. Hearing some really small ones, probably hard to pick up on the camera. This actually primed really well pretty quickly. But if you are hearing crackling or popping sounds, you're just gonna continue to cycle. Continue to cycle the system until you get you know, no more air in the system. And right there, if you notice, I'm losing some pressure. My spray fluid has come back to me. It means air ha is still in the system. I still got air in the system. I might have... Uh, just cycling it again, pump turned off, pulling the trigger again, 
and I'm getting my uh, my distance again. And I'm just washing my distance. It's staying pretty consistent. I'm not hearing any crackling. I'm not hearing any popping sounds. Right now, I'm fairly certain this unit is actually primed up and ready to go. I could tell because I have a consistent spray uh, distance over on my far end. I'm very consistent with my spray distance. Cycle it one more time just to be 100% sure. Like I said, I haven't been hearing any crackling or popping. One more pool, still a consistent spray. This system is officially primed. There's no more air in the line. All the air has been replaced by my material. At this point, I am ready to start spraying again. So, now we can imagine, you know, I came to a house, you know, and I did the whole building and we cleaned, whatever the case is, and now I'm done. You really, and now we're gonna go over the cleanup procedure. Before I start the procedure, I'm gonna explain why it's so important. A lot of people miss this, and then they wonder why their pumps are failing. The cleanup is probably the single most important thing that's gonna make your pump last the longest it can. We all know that bleach or SH, it's really aggressive stuff. It destroys everything it touches, let's be honest. Um, you know, you can see the back of some guy's trucks or trailers, it's literally melting with rust because that's what SH does. Um, you know, it's a very aggressive material, which is why it's important to clean your pump out after every job. Not after every day, but when I finish a roof or the siding or a house wash, before I leave to the next job, I wanna flush my system out. From the time it takes me to drive from one place to another, I don't want bleach or chlorine in my system. I want it cleaned out. Uh, you know, there's probably some exceptions to the rule. If I'm working on a house here and the next house is three houses down, I'd probably not flush in between that. But if I'm leaving a community and going to another area of town and we're talking about a 15 minute drive, I absolutely want to flush my system out. It's worth it in the long run because there's a difference between getting three jobs done in one day than getting one job done, showing up to my second job and having my pump fail. And now I wasn't able to complete the rest of my day, throws off my schedule. Everything's changed from one pump failing. That's why it's so important to clean out your system. So what are we gonna do to clean out our system? Let's come over here to my buckets. In my example, I've actually tinted one bucket blue to help us understand what's going on and my you know theoretical material bucket was just water so i'm going to pull my suction hose out of my bleach or my mix you know container or tank and i'm going to go ahead and drop it into my clean water tank and in my example my clean water here i've tinted blue using a, uh, something called pump saver um, which is a winterizing agent for uh, pressure washers and paint sprayers um, it's probably not a bad idea to be running this through the pump. Now, I wouldn't say it's 100% recommended, but I like Pump Saver. It's designed to save pumps, lubes up pumps, keep them working well. So I got my Pump Saver through, I switched it over, and I'm really just gonna start spraying. And what I'm looking for right now, as I'm spraying the floor here, is I am looking for this blue liquid to come out. So essentially, I am, um, you know, and you could technically spray this back into your material tank because technically this is still my bleach coming out of my line. And if you don't want to waste it, you can just spray it back in your material tank. And um, as soon as I start seeing a blue hue, um, that's how I know now that the bleach is out of my system. And, um, and now I'm getting the clean water through. So I'm just watching my system. Hoping uh, to get a blue hue eventually here. Um, I probably should have mixed this a little stronger just so that the blue stands out more. Go ahead and mix more in there. And this, there, and now, I want you guys to notice I'm getting sunny in there. So now I'm already noticing that I'm starting to get some of my clean water through. The reason I know that is because this pump saver is what's causing some of that sudden to happen. Um, you know, what was in there before was just water and that wouldn't cause that effect. 
Um, and now you're actually starting to see the whole bucket starting to turn blue a little bit. So I'm gonna switch over here and just spray this back into my clean water. And I'm just gonna cycle this here for about five minutes, honestly. That's the gist. We're getting the chlorine out of the system. We're getting the chlorine out of the pump and we're flushing it. And um, even though the moment this hit the pump, it technically flushed the pump, I still just wanna sit here for a couple minutes and give it a really good flush. And this is something you're gonna do in between each job. Might seem a little tedious, but it's the difference between the pump failing on you halfway through the day and your pump surviving six months long. It's how much you clean your pump, how well you clean your pump, and you know, the fact that you're not skipping this step, you know? And um, at this point, honestly, I'm feeling really confident that my pump has been flushed out and um, I probably have a nice clean system ready to go to my next job. Uh, you know, nothing too complicated, guys. But this cleaning out of the system is probably one of the most important things you can do. Um, you know, so very important. Um, if you guys have any questions about how we're going to prime the system, why we're priming the system, or any of the cleanup procedure, let me know. Um, I'm actually going to give you guys a, a little pro or advanced tip here. Um, right here, I got you guys to notice that there's a small little Allen screw on the top of my diaphragm pump. Um, this is actually could be compared to a pressure regulator on a pressure washer. And I'm actually going to take the time right now, and we're actually going to talk about this and what you should do with it, what you should not do with it, and when you should know to do something. So um, we're going to do that right now. Okay, so we know, you know, we just went over, this is pretty similar to a pressure regulator, but there's really only one situation when I use this, and um, I'll kind of explain what's going on, what not, as we go through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip on the pump. Uh, okay, pump's on, and I'm just gonna put my trigger on, on automatically turning on, so. I want you guys to notice, when the pump is running, it's not clicking on and off at all. It's running in a consistent state, and when I release my trigger right now, the pump stopped running about a second or a half second after I release my trigger. So let's just do that one more time to show you guys. When I pull my trigger, my pump is running in a consistent state. It's not turning on and off quickly. Oh, I hear some crackling. That's that water in the line. That's that crackling of the water in the line. Right, so, um, but when I turn my pump off, and when I release my trigger, my pump turns off. But it's important to see that um, the pump's on a constant on state, and it's not flicking on and off, or I'm not hearing this clicking sound of it turning on and off over and over and over again. And um, if you are noticing that your pump is clicking on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off, that's going to damage the pressure switch in here. Underneath these three screws, there's a little pressure switch that flips on and off, on and off. And if it's just flipping on and off all day long, hundreds of times per day, or really thousands of times per day, the pressure switch is gonna fail. Um, it's not designed to be flipped on and off every half second or every second. It's designed to be on or off, and it does switch back and forth, but just not super fast. Click, 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 click. If you're noticing your pump doing that, you gotta adjust it. So I'm actually gonna pull my pump out of its adjustment so we can see that happen. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm actually gonna back this Allen screw all the way out. And um, these come in different settings from the factory, so you know, they could all be in different places. They're not really set from the factory. So I just kind of backed it out, and I haven't changed anything else. I'm just gonna pull my trigger, I wanna see how my pump's gonna act. And that's what I'm talking about. So you see my pump's turning on and off, and we're hearing a clicking noise. That clicking sound is that pressure switch. Opening and closing, opening and closing, opening and closing. And you see how quickly it's cycling back and forth? Your pump's not really supposed to be doing that. It's not supposed to be doing that at all. 
It's supposed to be consistently on, and when I release my trigger, it should turn off within about one second. If you're noticing that you have this clicking, clicking, clicking sound, we need to make an adjustment here. So I'm actually gonna lock my trigger, and I can actually adjust it while it's on. And I'm just slowly turning it, and it's gonna find the sweet spot where it's gonna run consistently. You see, it's already slowed down, but I'm still clicking on and off. Getting better, almost there. Still clicking, once about every second. There it is. Whoop. There it is. By adjusting that Allen screw, I'm able to adjust it in a way where it's not just gonna click on and off, on and off. You want your pump having a consistent run state like this, because that's the way it's supposed to be running. Um, another few things I'm gonna throw at you guys about this pressure switch. Um, this is probably the part that fails the most for most people is just this pressure switch. Uh, because it's cycling on and off and maybe you're not noticing it because they're up on the roof or wherever the case may be. Depending on the uh, viscosity of your mix, some people use more surfactant than others, it gets a little thicker, that's going to change how everything works. Which is why you kind of want to adjust this. Uh, when you get them, you should make sure it's running consistently on and turning off and not flipping on and off, especially when you're using your actual mix if you've got surfactants in there because the different viscosity material is gonna change the way the pump acts to your material. So something to keep in mind. Um, like I mentioned just moments ago, the pressure switch is the normal part that fails on this. Um, you can actually buy them on my website. They're about $12 or so, maybe $14. I don't know off the top of my head, but I know it's not very expensive. Uh, to change it, it's really just these three screws. You pull it out, you drop the new one in, and boom. Nine times out of ten, that's what's really going wrong with a lot of these pumps. People think their whole pump is fried or whatever the case is. It's really just a pressure switch a lot of times. And I'm actually going to give you, this is a super pro tip uh, for all of you that are still here to the very end of this video. And if you're still listening to me, this is really going to be an amazing tip for you guys. If you were to open this up, Inside of here, you'll find the actual pressure switch, which is really small. It's about this big. It's a rectangle with a piece of metal sticking out at a 45 degree angle. And that piece of metal goes up and down like that. And uh, that's how it's turning on and off. Click, 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 click. That little switch, I think it's called a micro switch. I believe that's what they're referred to. If you take that piece and take it down to Granger, your local Granger, and show it to them, it's about $1 just for that micro switch. Uh, I always tell people, if one of your switch fails, pull it out, run down to Granger, and pick up a handful of them, buy 10 of them, and throw them in your truck. Uh, a lot of times you change out to a pressure switch and you're back to working, and it literally is three screws, you expose it, you switch it, and you move on with life. And that's really everything there is to know about this, um, this pressure switch area and that Allen key on there. Uh, the most important thing really to take from this is to make sure that your pump is running smoothly. And if it's not, you can adjust it there. Um, backing it off will essentially lower your pressure and putting it down will increase your pressure. Um, I don't really consider that, you know, I don't use it because of the pressure reasons. I really only adjust it to make sure my pump is running smoothly. Um, you know, so I would I don't get too hung up on what exact PSI I'm spraying at All I want to know is that my pump is running in a smooth state and not turning on and off on and off on and off on and off all day long Because the switch isn't designed to do that and it will fail. It absolutely will It's what's happening to a lot of people out there and I almost guarantee uh, Most people won't make it to the end of the video to take that piece of advice So if you did make it that far you probably have a leg up um, that's all I got for you guys today. Any comments, questions, anything, guys, send me an email, sales at jayandequipment.com. Leave me a comment below on the YouTube comments. I do read them. I do respond to the questions in my comments. We're on Instagram, jn underscore equipment. We're also on uh, Facebook, jn equipment. Um, I answer all the questions that come at me, whether you call us, email us, social media, whatever the case is. 
if you guys have questions, just ask, and I will try my hardest to get back to you guys. Uh, you know, and that's it. Signing off from Jane Equipment. You guys take it easy out there, and good luck.